All right, let's get this podcast underway here on this uh, November the 18th. Dennis Fithian with you here in studio, and we're uh, we're ready to go. We've got a, a, a host of guests here, and we're happy to have them all in. Chris Evans uh, in studio here. Uh, Chris, it's great to see you. Great to see you too, man. Thanks for coming in, and why don't you tell us a little bit about the guys that you have uh, in here with you on uh, – uh, straight ahead to me, you got Coach Mario. Yes, sir, Coach Mario. Coach Mario Stewart, he uh, is defensive coordinator over at Ann Arbor Huron, and uh, he's the high school director at, um, for CE Stars. All right, River Rats, yes, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Throw it up yes, there. All right. Yes, then uh, Scott yes, is uh, over there to your left. Yes, sir. Scott, he's a great mind, you know what I'm saying, and we, we came together. I know his son plays. Uh, was one of the key ingredients for the CE Stars kids, and he he controls the, the, the flag operations for the younger kids, six, seven, eight, nine. And uh, pretty much it comes together like that. And we're going to talk all about that. But we are here the weekend following Michigan, Michigan State. And there was some big news the week before Mm -hmm. with you coming back to Michigan. And and just tell me, that's got to, I don't know, just tell me what that's like for you. Yes, sir. It's huge. Um, I was just, had to wait my time. You know what I'm saying? I had an academic misconduct issue, but I got that figured out. And everything's good. I'm I'm back with the team working out and practicing and stuff. So it's, it's just great to be back. Is that like a, a weight off your shoulders? I mean, this has been about a, a year-long type situation. Did you always think that this day was going to come? Uh, I always had, you know what I'm saying, doubts, you know what I'm saying, because I didn't, I didn't know what could happen. If they could suspend me for a year, I didn't know at this point what, what could happen to me coming back. So I'm just grateful for the opportunity and ready just to get back rolling. Was this, where'd you watch the game at? At my house. And, and what was that like? Uh, good. I like seeing, uh, watching the game on TV, just seeing um, – you know what I'm saying? My friends that I'm close with and uh, seeing them react on the ga- in the game and seeing how passionate they are about the rivalry. Have the guys, uh, have they been with you the whole time here? Like talked about the, the players that you came in with. Uh, I saw that uh, whether it was Khalik Hudson or, or Kemp or Uche, they were all mm-hmm. taken to Twitter last week when yes, they sir. saw that, you know, you got the thumbs up. Uh, what's just been that situation like for a year with you kind of being on the outside and and, uh, and having to wait? Uh, good. It was... Uh mind-boggling you know what i'm saying just being able to see like just stepping away you know what i'm saying not being um you know what i'm saying like a michigan football player is kind of weird kind of in public and stuff like that so but I, I use that as you know what i'm saying being humble getting humbled and taking my slice of pie and, and going about my business and so you weren't just laying low i mean you're working with other coaches yes, here and you started working. up a nonprofit, which seems a little bit uh it seems different to me mm-hmm. that's usually something like after the playing days and, and you go mm-hmm. back but this is something you had the time down just tell me how it all started out uh so um my program has been started since uh since i got up here in michigan in 2017 and pretty much we just get the kids the opportunity to, to get exposure you know what i'm saying through 707 and camps and combines and stuff like that and we we the first year we brought a couple kids together and we actually was really successful um won the midwest regional state championship went down to national championship and ranked ninth so it was pretty big the buzz got around and um just started adding pieces to the puzzle and um just started collectively evolving together do they call you coach? No, they call you Coach Mario. Do they, they call you Coach Chris? What do they call you? Yeah, Coach. Yeah. We, we, you know, I saw your Twitter handle. Uh, it's got a the kid and play. Is kid and play close to yes, that? Yes, sir. Right? So tell me about that. Like I've never heard the story there. I I see the uh, the hair. So the kind of the resemblance. Uh, I mean, I, I I'm old enough to remember the original. So yeah, uh, yeah I mean, great great movies. Uh, I mean, my 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 parents uh, kind of like that show, and uh, I had my friend when I was younger in seventh grade. I, I had high top fade since I was long as I can remember like fourth or fifth grade and uh he had a high top fade too so we kind of came up with that persona of the kid kid in play and we was just you know what I'm saying that was my guy you know what I'm saying and we just that's that was that's what we portrayed and I just used that as my uh Twitter handle Instagram whatever I could just to just to do that we'll get all those out there and for people that are listening here that may be familiar with seven on seven football and what that's all about will get you up to speed on just who to contact and, and how to go through all of that and what that's all about. I could ask you a million questions about football, so I'm just going to keep firing them at you. And mm-hmm. so uh, you, you mentioned you get to work out with a team. Is that something that you were doing? Uh, it, you were able to go to practices or you were able to just work out like weightlifting and stuff like that? You talking about right now? Yeah, right now. When when did that happen? Where you were able to get back with the team? Uh, as soon as I got the information, Coach Arbaugh called me, and uh, I was back. So starting uh, last Monday, I've been in the, in, in the facility working out, and uh, you know what I'm saying, just trying to get back and 
uh, the shape I was in when I was at Michigan. And prior to that, you had to work out outside the facility, so that's mm-hmm. where you're going over, like, the high schools and, and mm-hmm. things like that. That, yes, that had to be something where, you know, you're, you you want to be part of the team. Just, just talk mm-hmm. a little bit about that. That seems like that could have been a – I got to have been tough uh, mentally, you know, to, yeah, to have was, to go um, through that. I had to get a couple jobs, and one of my jobs was uh, I coached over at Ann Arbor Huron with Coach Mario. Uh, he gave me a call one day, and, and I was contemplating about going home and uh, spending my time at home and just trying to figure it out, but he gave me a call, and I didn't really know him at the time, you know what I'm saying? And we talked, connected, and um, I was over at Huron with him, and, and for coaching high school my first time, it was like a, a great experience, you know what I'm saying, all the – all the you know what I'm saying accolades he had at Belleville and and as a coach he just you know what I'm saying put that on me and made sure that I knew what was going on and we was on the same page and we we got a lot of confidence they won their first game in like four or five years so it was cool and how and how's Huron doing? We all right we build it we build it it's a process and I, and I tell the kids all this all the time that it's a process you know and every day we got to keep battling and chipping away at that process you know one of our logos was you know our Slogan was chip to paint, you know, and that means a lot, you know what I'm saying, for us and, and what we do. So. And what was it like? Uh, when did you meet Chris, and what was that interaction uh, like, and I what's the him, experience been like? So I, I met you at the tournament, right, at mm-hmm. the Legacy Tournament, like uh, like first year your program was taking off. Mm-hmm. Um, and after that, man, I just seen, you know, his his determination and him, him wanting to be better, you know, want to be better and want to mentor the kids to be the best they can be. And that's something that I, you know, that's instilled in me, you know, so. You know, we just click, man. You know, like minds, you know, they always yes, sir. each other. So. Sure. And one thing I know about uh, Ann Arbor football, the scene, I'm like, there's there's a lot of players. It's not like uh, mm-hmm. you guys are, are, are looking around and saying, yes, man, there's no talent around there. Yes, mm-hmm. And you look at all the weather, Notre Dame, mm-hmm. Michigan, Michigan State, there's always somebody coming out of now, the, like, mm-hmm. I guess, the three big high schools, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, what's that like, how to try to get the players and draw them in? Uh, it's a, it's a Again, it's a process, man. Like, you got to get the kids to, to buy in to what they want to do. Um, you know, what you want, what the program wants, what the school wants, but you want to also find guys that can, that can you know, do what you need them to do when you're not looking, when you're not around. And that's what, it, that's what it's all about is getting the best men, the best kids you can get, the best, you know, I could say men, um, the best young men you can get, you know, to, 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 to do those things that you need them to do to be successful. Um, and that's what it's about for me, just about mentorship and just keep, keep getting better as the day goes on. And the seven on seven and the C stars that that helps with yeah. everything, getting everything going. You, they can do that from a younger age. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When, when can you start up with that? When can you start up with CE stars? Uh, start about six, seven, eight, and oh, yeah, and, okay. and, and and it all comes together. You know what I'm saying? And it starts with the bottom. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Scott runs the the flag, like I said, and he takes those six year olds and builds them all the way up until they can graduate into our seven on seven program when they turn ten, and uh, you know what I'm saying? And go like that until they get to high school. Did, who gave you the call? Was it Harbaugh that gave you the call, Coach Harbaugh, to say you're back? Yeah, I, I had to go to the to meet with the dean first, and then as soon as I got out, um, I told uh, my parents, and Coach Harbaugh called me. So, yeah. You don't seem like a, you, you can't when you play football. I mean, you can't be shy, and you mm-hmm. got to be ready to compete with anything. But but there was that different kind of situation talking with the dean, like a little nervousness there. Yeah, because you know what I'm saying she was kind of she was kind of um, it was she's new. You know what I'm saying? So um, I was kind of her first first case. So she had to, you know what I'm saying, really make sure she put her foot down on what she did. And, and I respect that. So um, I was kind of nervous when I went in there. But she was, um, she kind of laughed at me and said, like, you ain't got nothing to worry about. You're good. Just do this X, Y, and Z. And then that's what I did. Well, that's great. And so you're not a, a Michigan kid. You're an Indiana kid, right? Indianapolis the whole way? Yes, sir. So uh, 2019, definitely in college football, if there's one thing in the offseason and heading into this year, was the transfer portal. I mean, mm-hmm. everybody's hitting that thing. Mm-hmm. You had to think about it a little bit. Uh, what did you think about – did you, did you look at that portal at all at any time and thought about uh, jumping in? Uh, no, nah, um, the Michigan motto is those who stay will be champions, and uh, I really I really believe in that, you know what I'm saying? Even, even um, growing up being an Ohio State fan and um, – Ohio State offered me two weeks before signing day after I've been committed to Michigan for six months. Um, and, and Urban Meyer called me and told me, um, is it make your dream come reality? And that was like a dream, him, him saying that. But I had to stay loyal and stay what, you know what I'm saying, stay who I gave my word to. And uh, that's what I went, went with. 
You know, when I think of uh, your career, I was just watching the game Saturday at the Big House, and at the one point, Zach Charbonnet, the the true freshman from mm-hmm. California, they had put up his uh, rushing numbers as a as a true freshman, and, and they were just scrolling through, and there was your name, you know, as mm-hmm. a true freshman and in rushing numbers. And uh, so, when you, do you have? Like you, you, you talk about the the players that you came in with, but the running back room. Some of those guys, you know, like uh, like like Haskins, and mm-hmm. we've seen him out there. You've been able to stay in touch with everybody, and everybody's, yeah, uh, you know, sure. what's that been like? Oh, uh, another like I said, another one of my jobs was uh, 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 almost delivery. That's a Mexican and Mediterranean place, and all all the um, all the football players we have it on our fuel and blue cards that we can we get a certain amount of money to go there, and they always come through there, and I chop it up with them. But I don't really chop it up with them about um, football. I just want to make sure they're good mentally and just, make, you know what I'm saying, before the Penn State game and talk to Charbonnet about that And because the Penn State on the road and the whiteout is something different. So just make sure I put that in his ear and make sure he's good mentally to go. What would you think about this year? Just as we sit here, you had, you had tough losses against uh, Wisconsin. We mm-hmm. know about that one. The Penn State game was first half not so good, second half really good, came right down to the end there. And But since then, beating two rivals and – no, just Saturday taking care of Michigan State. I mean, what's that like for you watching it? Oh, that's great. Um, we're you can you can tell we're getting better and better each game, and um, it's gonna come down to the game. That's all I'm gonna say. That's 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 the game that can't explain how how it feels in, in between the lines. But I just it's gonna come down to the game, and it's at home, so that's gonna be that's gonna be fun. Yeah, you know when you mentioned the game, not to you not know, ask anybody else any questions, but uh, I was just thinking about the the double overtime game, JT Barrett coming up, like you know that short, but they yeah. they only you know, gave it to him. Everything you were in that game, and yeah. you were down there at the horseshoe, had had carries, uh, and uh, what do you remember about just that? Yeah, that's since Jim Harbaugh has been here, and, and Michigan fans, uh, they've been they've, like, I don't need to tell you, you mm-hmm. just talked about the game. Uh, that's as close as Michigan's been, and, and what was mm-hmm. that like? Uh, that was that was ridiculous. Um, the whole defensive, the whole defensive, uh, the whole defensive unit. You know what I'm saying went to the NFL that next year, and and uh, Jabril and Jordan Lewis, and just playing with those guys. And I'll never forget Jordan Lewis said, uh, "Before that game, you can train for war, but there's nothing like it." So that I I didn't know what that meant at the time, but as I as I started, you know, what I'm saying sinking it in, I'm like, like this is this is the time. It's time to go. So. That that game is just I don't know if he was short or not, being and the the rest gotta make it, but that was that was a great game. All right. So football players, football coaches and everything, Michigan fans, college football fans have been looking, even though Michigan's coming off, they beat Michigan State. It looks like they're playing their best football. Mm-hmm. And they do have the sandwich game, the whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. uh, this game against uh, Indiana, the next one, but mm-hmm. it is Ohio State. What would all of you guys say? to people that have already just looking at the last game and just thinking, you know, there's just no way it's going to happen. There's no way that Michigan could could beat could beat Ohio State. They just haven't been able to do it, especially just the, the machine that uh, the Buckeyes look right now. Coach Mario, what what do you say? Like, you guys are you guys are in the game. You guys coach the game. Uh, when you hear the fans say that, you know, what's that like? Like she said, you can train for war, but there's nothing like it, man. You know, and that, that you saying that, that gave me chills right there because mm-hmm. there's nothing like it. There's yeah. nothing like it, you know, until you get out there and you see the fans and you like experiencing that from a, from a coaching standpoint. There's there's nothing like it, man. There's nothing like it. And what about uh, Scott that's over there? We haven't heard from him. And how, how, how do you know Chris and – you know, you're here today. It's good to see you. And, yeah, thanks. You know, listen, how's, how's this talk going? Am I missing any questions here? No, that, you're that doing well. Okay. And my whole comment around looking at Ohio State at the end of the calendar to start off with, it's just, you know, after a couple of disappointing losses early in the season, uh, you start to look at your rivalries and you start to knock them off and then you build confidence and steam and motivation towards that end game. And so uh, U of M's looking good and going in the right direction. Chris, uh, there seems to be a point where you can get, uh, you can be involved in a game, and you can be too hyped up, or you can be too on edge. You know, mm-hmm. I, I hear the athletes say you want to, certainly want to be, you know, motivated and everything, but you want to play relaxed. Yeah. Is, is there something like you think there's something to that where you can be? Have you oh, yeah. experienced it all, whether high school or college, where you're so amped up that mm-hmm. you know you weren't get, you weren't getting the best out of your abilities because of that? Um. Yeah. I. Uh... Um, I always did a thing to where I don't listen to the loud and the loud music before the games, especially when I'm playing on them. And uh, 
I just listen to slow music like some Frank Ocean or something, you know what I'm saying? Some Luther Band drum, something like that. You know what I'm saying? Some Luther, and then just just to just to get my mind focused on what's going on because I read a study that you could tire your mind out, you know what I'm saying? If you if you get too hype, you know what I'm saying? But being over at Huron, I was listening to loud music and stuff, and it, it got me going as a coach because at, at at some point you got to get the kids and you got to get the kids hyped up too. So I seen both sides of the spectrum. All right, I'll, I'll take you off on an offshoot here. You just mentioned music there and, and ocean and things. I, I mm-hmm. saw something. It might have been from your Twitter handle, but there was a, a – I don't know if it was – it must have been a, a maybe a rapper from New York. Mm-hmm. M.A.? Who's that? Is yeah. that I, I wasn't familiar. Mm-hmm. Is that who you – is that somebody that you like? You like the lyrics? Uh, you yeah. like everything about them? What is it? Yeah, Young M.A. is a, is a, is a female rapper. She's, okay. I think she's from New York or something like that. But – uh. I like when she was when she she got this song that I that really like explain what like I was going through over my time off and that's this one couple words she said and um it stuck with me so I had to put that out there. Yeah, I noticed just uh it, it, if I had never talked with you before, just watching you play at Michigan, I, I don't remember what game it was, but you came out and I don't know if it would I don't even know what you'd call it. Uh it looked like a Maybe a gas station shirt. You guys mm-hmm. had it on, like a collared shirt. But you mm-hmm. had the other guys. Do you yeah. know what shirt I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So this, you were like, uh, you're a thoughtful guy. I knew that. But mm-hmm. then I saw that, and I was like, yeah, I always wanted to ask him about that. What was that all about? So Coach Harbaugh, um, after our camp, um, our fall camp, he gives those shirts out, and uh, you get the you get the t-shirt first, and then you you um, level up to the to the jacket. So my freshman year, I got the jacket. I mean, I got the, the t-shirt. And all the older guys had the jackets. So, um, like when you get it, like for for at Michigan, like that's like your second skin throughout the throughout the camp. You know what I'm saying? Camp is every day grind and every day grind. And so when you get up, you throw that shirt on and you you know what I'm saying? You go go over to the facility and you you go back home. You put this you put the shirt off and then you get up and do it again. So that was uh, that was how we did it. And as I um, graduated up to the next to the jacket, I wore like a every every chance I could. So. Yeah, I don't know if I, I a garage or a bowling shirt. Maybe mm-hmm. that's is that the better description? Yeah. I don't know what you guys. No, call it's, it. it's a it's a workers workers jacket shirt. Workers shirt. Okay. So whatever. So it, it's so I, I used to wear it over at Huron, and the kids was like, "Coach, would you you a mechanic or something?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Nah, like that's like that's just a blue collar mentality that Coach Harbaugh wants to you know what I'm saying, just instill in us. So I, that's what I do. Well, if I could talk with you about on the football field. Uh, so two years ago, I liked the one-two punch with you and Karan Higdon. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was it was looking like a, a a duo. It was a dangerous duo, you know, mm-hmm. with the two of you. He went on with the Texans, and yes, sir. and then and then this year, we don't know how it was going to go. But now, when you look to the following, a lot of running backs. Do you see yourself like if you could even be a wide receiver? I, you're bigger than Austin Eckler for the for the Chargers, but mm-hmm. I see with Melvin Gordon back, mm-hmm. they've like got him a lot. He's really dangerous as a running back, mm-hmm. as a wide receiver. Do you see? I know you had one. Did you have a start as a wide receiver here? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, so what, how do you see yourself as? Uh, you know, however, you, I know you just want to be out on the field and win mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. But what yeah. do you think? Yeah. So like right now, I'm just you know what I'm saying, just taking it one day at a time, working out and and uh, just taking it like process over outcome. You know what I'm saying, and just. Each day, what and whatever I can do, Coach Gaddis is a he's a he's a wizard when it comes to play calling, and I just want to see where wherever I insert myself or where they see me best fit, and just do it to the best of my ability. All right, a couple more quick hitters, and then we'll tell everybody out there whether it's uh, themselves or their cousins or their kids that get involved in seven on seven football. C E Stars, C Stars dot com, and mm-hmm. I, I checked the website out. But you mentioned Gaddis, Speed and Space, and so you're watching it. From from your vantage point, is it is it a lot different than because it seemed to me that it, it started out a lot different, but it seems like it's gone back to look more like last year and the years before. Mm. Just talking about the running game with all the different things, is that true or is it is it night and day from what you're seeing? Uh, it's it's just pretty much um, we got the uh, coach Coach Gaddis in the building, you know what I'm saying? So he's he's bringing a different different culture to the game, you know what I'm saying? Not using fullbacks as much and. You know what I'm saying doing different things that you know what I'm saying I ain't I can't go full in detail about but it's in in my opinion it's like this is something that I feel like I'm better fitted for you know what I'm saying uh um as a running back so I'm excited to get in there what's the biggest thing you learn you know I hear a lot of times when when players get hurt they have the chance they're like coaches on the sideline to be able to mm-hmm. watch it from that vantage point they've always been in the grind of mm-hmm. playing your situation even a little bit further removed than that what's the biggest thing you learn with the year off uh, 
What you talking about? Coaching or just no, in general? But you know what? Like, so you, you had this was a, a complete departure, I'm sure, than what you thought yeah. was going to happen. And now, you know, you, you went from, from playing and, and every day and had to deal with what you were dealing with not playing with this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, you talked about how, how difficult that was, but uh, did you learn? I mean, it, maybe you didn't. Maybe you were just like, man, you can't just wait to get back. Uh, yeah. was, was there anything you no, thought? I, like, I definitely Maybe that would make you better? Yeah, I definitely learned a lot. I know that. Um, Whatever you can be working hard for something for your whole life, literally, and it could be taken away just you know what I'm saying for one mistake that you made, and uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying, just perseverance. Like through that time, I could have, you know what I'm saying, just not did anything, or you know what I'm saying, took off, or you know what I'm saying, or or try to drop everything and transfer, you know what I'm saying, like he was talking about. But you know what I'm saying, I, I learned a lot about loyalty and and just stuff like that. So yeah, you think you'll. Uh, some of the younger kids already that you work with in camp and everything, you know, you've been able to give some of that information to them. Hey, if you mess up or whatever, yeah, you know, keep keep it going. Yeah, absolutely. I um I said that I, I had a I had a couple words at the banquet at Heron and uh, just made sure they 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 knew that. And hey, your goals are all still ahead of you, right? Like, yes, sir. so you're just in the middle of this. We're not talking about it at the end. This this is in the middle, which is yes, which sir. is kind of cool. All yes, right, sir. well, let's hear more about um let's hear more about seven on seven. If you're Somebody out there listening, you have somebody that uh, you know that would be interested in, in, in getting out there. Uh, Coach Mario, tell us wh- uh, what to do. Uh, first of all, uh, first of all, you just want to uh, leave. So on Sundays we have practice uh, from six to eight thirty mm-hmm. at the Taylor Sports uh, Complex. Workouts or are free, which is the most important thing: it being free to the kids and, and being open to the community. So anybody can come out and, you know, bring their kids or nieces, nephews, little brothers, and they can come get some quality work, quality work, and still get that mentorship and, and, and learn that leadership. That sounds great. And, think, and what, what are the age groups there that they can come out for? Yeah, I think the coolest part of the program and what we're trying to put together is that kids of all ages can come out all the way from 6 to 18 years old, right? So from the time you're third, second, or third grade all the way through the time you're a junior, senior in high school. And we've got kids at all different skill levels and different stages in their development. And there's a place for everybody at CE Stars. And so, of course, we've got our elite teams that have already made some noise with national championships. But we've also got folks that we're bringing along for the ride and developing their skill set. And it's about working with kids both on the field and off the field. Yes, sir. And where, where do they go? The CEstars.com. You see all the information there. And that's the easiest way to do it. Everybody mm-hmm. can. Everybody can do that. I punched it up, came up in like 20 seconds. Mm-hmm. C.E., Chris Evans? Is that what that's? <laughs> no? Mm-mm. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a person of high believer that it takes it takes an empire, you know what I'm saying, to, to fully do something successfully. And uh, I made sure that um, during the time, I made sure it wasn't Chris Evans stars because not not just the, like the compliance issues and all stuff like that, at being a college athlete, but just being a, just really symbolizing like team and unity you know what i'm saying that's one thing i really really believe in and and whoever i'm going to war with and anything just making sure they're on the same thing that i'm on and we collectively evolve and that's what it stands for all right yep. well i know when i google chris evans comes up captain america that's the first name. But if you put <laughs> yes, football sir. you're the first name that yes, comes sir. up man so you and you and captain america right yes, there sir. all right is there any question i didn't ask any guy that you guys that you want to put out there and um just tell everybody about anything Mm-hmm. You want to say workouts again? Workouts yeah. and tournaments. Talk about the tournaments coming up in January. Okay. okay. Tournament coming up in in January. All right. Yeah, go ahead. That going to be on the website? Mm-hmm. And that's for is that for people that have already been so, involved there? So, that yeah. So pretty much we have, like I said, we our flag kids are pretty much on a different train as the seven oh seven kids. So um, we have our own tournament, seven oh seven tournament that we're running in Pontiac. Um, January 11th and 12th, and um, we're inviting uh, teams out that want to come out, and, um, and we're gonna just—it's gonna be—it's called C C Stars Ball to You Fall, and uh, you get to come out and, and, and play and compete at a high level against kids from all around the country. We got teams like Nebraska Elite, um, um, teams from Indianapolis coming up. We have our C Stars Indianapolis team coming up as well, and. And stuff like that, and 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 um, Scott can elaborate more on what the the flag got coming up. So, go what's Scott's last name? Bivens. Scott Bivens. Scott Bivens. And, and just just one note to add about um, seven on seven in general. I know it's a new concept for a lot of folks. It's been around for a while, but it's really at the pinnacle of off season development. 
And, you know, that's our whole goal is right after the kids take off the pads um, as work on skill work and develop uh, techniques that's going to help them kind of accelerate their performance on the field during the season as well. We're do also doing the same concept or say with uh, the younger kids as well. And so six through nine year olds, uh, we do off season development with them as well. Uh, and instead of competing with uh, as a seven on seven team, we compete as a five on five flag team. And our we have, we've got a, an elite group of kids. I know that sounds funny because most of the time when we talk about six year olds, it's like herding cats. <laughs> but we, we've actually got uh, a group of uh, well disciplined young men, actually summer national champions at our six U mm -hmm. level. Uh, and when you see them play the game, it's amazing uh, because they understand the concepts uh, of football. And it just so happens to show up during flag uh, football. And so. Uh, we were just in a tournament in, in Commerce. We're looking forward to playing at Ford Field on December 1st. Um, uh, where we'll be playing down there, I think it's a Sunday, and we've got a six-year-old and an eight-year-old team, an eight and under-year-old uh, uh, team in there. And also in the middle of January, we'll be traveling to Tampa to play for the national championships. And so we're playing against teams all across the U.S., as far out as uh, Hawaii, uh, to New York, so exciting. Seems like I should throw in a joke about the Lions there with you guys playing at Ford Field. Maybe you guys could uh, put, out a better, put out a better show, but I'll leave that for another mm -hmm. time. Coach Mario, we appreciate your time. Any Thank last you. thing? No, sir. No, All sir. right, man, Thank best you. of luck. Thanks for coming in. Chris? I got one more thing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so listen, uh, CE Stars um, is different than any other program in the state because we have, like I said, from – all the way down to six, all the way down to 18, and pretty much we don't charge kids arm and a leg. And pretty much in, in the registration fees, you can fundraise it. You know what I'm saying? So we get most of the inner city kids from Ypsilanti, Detroit, stuff like that, and we, we can help them, you know what I'm saying, come across the process. We're not these type of organizations that are charging 650 or an arm and a leg, like I said, to, to come out and play because ultimately the off season is to help the kids out. You know what I'm saying? And and that's how we really get the cream of the crop athletes and just be able to develop to develop them as young men and just push it like that. Sounds positive. Yes, sir. I'm with it. Thanks, guys, coming in. Yes, sir. All the best to all of you. Yes, sir. Appreciate all right. you. Thank you. All right. Thanks.